Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with another in our seemingly endless series of little box sets that for some reason or another are still in print. And there's no reason, to, no way to determine why that's the case. It can't possibly be because people are buying them. Could it be? I don't know. Here is the box set in question. It's a Warner thing called American Classics. Now, back in the days when Warner was EMI, it had a somewhat larger box of 20 CDs. This one only has six, called something like Imaginary Landscapes. Um, I, I, American Music. It was an American Music box with all kinds of stuff in it. Maybe I'll, we'll talk about that one sometime as well. But in the meantime, um, there's this this six CD sort of um, core puzzle that derives kind of from that, sort of. Well, we're not going to go into those details. I just want to go through this and figure out what's in it. But first, we have to read the little blurby at the back, which is simply delicious. Trust me. It says, in the 20th century, the great American composers simmering in the mighty melting pot so that's what they were doing. They were simmering. Oh my goodness, those poor American composers, all simmering in a melting pot. I mean, I'm sure they would rather have been elsewhere. Anyway, they evoked Hollywood glamour, folksy landscapes, irresistible swing, poignant nostalgia, showbiz pizzazz. I thought that was Hollywood glamour. Well, okay, never mind. Sweet sentiment. Okay, I thought that was nostalgia. Streetwise sophistication. Okay, I thought that was irresistible swing. Well, and hypnotic minimalist drive. Well, minimalist drive is a street in Idaho. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's quite short, but it's right next to Maximalist Boulevard. Anyway. Um, this six CD box featuring such citizens of the world. I mean, they're, they're really they're really working very hard here, aren't they? <clears throat> As Simon Rattle, mm -hmm. Andre Previn, the Lebec sisters, double. Mm -hmm. uh, Renaud Capuçon, Hélène Grémo, and Pavo Yarvi take us on an exhilarating journey across the musical landscape of the USA. Why is it always a musical landscape? Why is it never a soundscape? I mean, I've always sort of wondered that, you know? It's like, oh, we have a musical landscape. I mean, but it's not, well, yeah, never mind. Let's see what's in it, shall we? I mean, let's just take a look and see what we get. And we will leave it there. Well, we get a booklet. And the booklet has things in it. Let's see what we have on disc one, CD one. Gershwin, The Rhapsody in Blue with Peter Donahoe and the London Sinfonietta under Simon Rattle. Well, it's been a while since we've heard that. I guess there's a reason anyway. Um, An American in Paris and I Got Rhythm um, with the Wayne Marshall doing the, you know, conducting the Aalborg Symphony and the Piano Concerto in F with Hélène Grémeau and the Baltimore Symphony under David Zinman. This was a strange disc, you know. Hélène is is a Beethoven Brahms person. That's what she likes to do. But Irato, back in the day, had no clue what to do with this with this um, very interesting pianist. So they they basically had her do all the usual stuff, the French stuff, some American stuff, and I don't really think she cared about any of it anyway. Then we see have CD2. It's a Bernstein CD. Um, oh my, it's the Prelude Fugue and Riffs, facsimile, the Symphonic Dances from West Side Story, and the Divertimento for Orchestra, all with the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra under Pavel Yarvi. This was done when Pavel Yarvi was only like six. He was just a little kid, and so they let him do Bernstein in Birmingham. And then we have the Wonderful Town Overture, with the Birmingham Contemporary Music Group 
under Simon Rattle, and the Candide Overture with the London Symphony under Andre Previn. All right, I mean, these are all perfectly fine performances. Um, nothing we haven't heard before. Then we've got CD3, Barber, the Adagio for Strings, and Knoxville, summer of 1915, with the City of London Symphonia and Richard Hickox. I assume Richard Hickox is singing Knoxville because nobody else is mentioned. Let's, let's see if we can find out who's actually performing. Oh, it's Jill Gomez. There we go, Jill Gomez. And then we have, let me see, maybe I have to do it with the, these lovely Statue of Liberty themed, themed booky things because um, they're not going to tell us who the soloists are in here. So uh, the, on the rest of CD3, we've got Korngold's Violin Concerto with Renaud Capuçon and the Rotterdam Philharmonic under Nazgul Snezik Yegen. I mean, pardon me, that's Yannick Nezé Seguin. Same difference. Korngold is an American composer. Well, I guess by adoption, sorta, kinda. It's the Hollywood glamour part of the blurb on the back of the box. And then we have the Coo Copeland's Appalachian Spring. Of course, you have to have that with the Korngold Violin Concerto with the City of London Symphonia and Richard Hickox. Um, okay. And the Fanfare for the Common Man with the London Philharmonic under Carl Davis. Boy, someone was digging around in the catalog for stuff they needed to, you know, do something with, weren't they? I mean, Richard Hickox's American period was, was let's, just, let's just say it wasn't his most distinguished, but okay. Next we get, oh, look at this. We get minimalists, a bunch of minimalists. We get John Adams, the chairman dances, two fanfares, including Short Ride and a Fast Machine with Simon Rattle in the city of Birmingham. And then we get Shaker Loops and Philip Glass Facades and Steve Reich's Eight Lines and more of Philip Glass Company with the London Chamber Orchestra under Christopher Warren Green with John Harrell playing the saxophone. Yes, so we have minimalists. That was that, you know, little, little, little minimalist drive, right, up in Idaho. And then finally, oh, this is CD5, pardon me, not finally, we get a whole bunch of the John McGlynn stuff, which really should be reissued. It was very, very well done. And McGlynn, McGlynn was, a, was a, a wonderful, wonderful sort of scholar slash conductor um, and uh, had a sad life. So I'm, I'm all for that. We get more Gershwin, um, Overtures and Sweets, A Damsel in Distress from the film arranged by McGlynn, and Overtures, Girl Crazy, Tiptoes, OK, Cole Porter, Overtures, Anything Goes, Can Can, Kiss Me Kate, Night and Day, from Gay Divorce. Oh, what a wonderful movie, or show, or whatever the heck that thing was. Jerome Kern, Leave It to Jane, Sitting Pretty, music from the film Swing Time, and the Showboat Overture. This is actually a fun disc, and it contains a lot of very, very interesting, you know, theater music. So that's nice to have and uh, be nice if it were available separately mm, instead of trapped in a melting pot. <laughs> it's melting. Oh, it's melting. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my beautiful wickedness. I'm melting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was American too, by the way. So there you go. And then we have this weird, weird selection of, of things. The Lebec sisters doing Joplin, Gershwin, Joplin, Johnson, Joplin, Gershwin, all of which are, is, it's, these are all arrangements for two pianos. I, I, I don't understand the point of any of that. I'd rather hear it as it was written for one piano. And then we've got some Porgy and Bess excerpts, um, Summertime and It Ain't Necessarily So, etc., from the complete Porgy and Bess with Simon Rattle, which is the, the worst of all of the complete Porgy and Besses. No, that's not true. We have Nicholas Harnoncourt. You know, there's always somebody to push the floor even lower or to sink to the bottom of the melting pot, shall we say. In this case, it was a smelting pot. So let's leave it at that. And then we have Strike Up the Band with Wayne Marshall and the Alborg Symphony, which must have come from something else that was in one of these earlier ones. And then we've got some 
Duke Ellington Arrangements with Simon Rattle and the City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. Boy, who remembers these? Good grief. Take the A-Train, Sophisticated Lady, that doo thing. It don't mean a thing. And come Sunday. And that, my friends, is a very weird collection of American classics. But it's a melting pot. If it were a very weird collection of French classics, it would be a fricassee. And if it were British classics, I guess you'd call it, I don't know, a stew, a something. And if it were German classics, oh, I have no idea what you'd call it. I mean, I really, really couldn't even begin, begin to guess. And I, yeah, I mean, there's some good stuff in here. And it's cheap, it's inexpensive and it's still available. And I guess if the Corn Gold Violin Concerto, I'm just looking at this absolutely random mishmash of stuff with the emphasis, of course, on theater music and movie stuff and little short, you know, things that don't tax the brain. Because after all, the melting pot is not an intellectual melting pot. It's a, it's a, a sort of sort of like buffet. It's more like the, the golden corral melting pot than it is a, a more sophisticated high-end selection of melted objects. So if you would like to hop into the pot and melt, then what the heck? Go for it. But otherwise, I, I'm somewhat confused. I guess, I guess I'm just not a melting pot kind of guy. Um, that's me. What can I say? As for you, keep on listening. Thank you for joining me. Take care.